Donald Trump has handed some incredibly good news today. DA Fannie Willis is caught in lie after lie after lie, including the fact that she secretly paid her lover under the table using cash that couldn't be traced. Senator Mitch McConnell is now a top contributor to the border crisis in Texas, and there's news coming out of Russia that might make you absolutely crazy. Thank you guys so much for liking and sharing these videos. It really helps me out, so thank you so much. Don't forget to go watch the Colonel McGregor interview that I did earlier today under the live tab. Uh, it was incredible, and he shared some really, really good information. Plus, I want to thank today's video sponsor, PDS Debt, and I'll tell you more about them later. Okay, Senator Joe Manchin has made a huge announcement. He is seriously considering running for President of the United States because he wants to put the country back in the middle and is worried about Biden's mental health. In order to put the country back in the middle, he's already selected as his top VP pick, Senator Mitt Romney of Utah. Uh, Mitt Romney lost the presidential election twice. Mitt Romney cannot get reelected in Utah, and now Joe Manchin wants to hamstring his presidential campaign by picking Mitt Romney before he's even gotten going. This tells me that he is not great at making decisions. Just a few days ago, the House made a historic decision to impeach Biden's border chief, Alejandro Mayorkas, for failing to implement federal law. Even though the Senate will likely void the bill passed in the House, President Joe Biden was furious as he was symbolically attacked by Republicans. While reacting to the vote, Biden highlighted that Mayorkas is a Cuban immigrant himself who has served the American people for over two decades by upholding the law. Well, I guess he forgot to do it once he got in office. All right, now listen. Biden can say whatever he wants, but he cannot deny the fact that under him and Mayorkas, the Texas border situation has gotten incredibly out of control. Almost 10 million people have flooded into the country. What the heck are we going to do with all of these people? They're weighing down the medical system. If you Google medical system health, you'll find that almost every medical system around the country is on the verge of imploding because they can't handle all of the business and people aren't paying their bills. So things are getting really out of control quickly. By the way, did you know that while Obama and Biden were running the country, they deported 3 million people out of the country and had one of the lowest immigration situations in history? So what changed, Biden? Are you compromised? Are you being pulled too far to the left by progressive, woke ideology? I don't know. Something has changed. But he had one of the tightest borders with Obama and now has one of the loosest borders on his own. Now, don't forget, the Democrat-led Senate actually made their first move uh, with the new foreign funding bill that Republicans warned against. With that being said, Republican Senator Ron Johnson blames Senator Mitch McConnell and says that he has stabbed Republicans in the back. During an interview with Breitbart News, Ron Johnson stated, Unbeknownst to us, Leader McConnell told his chief negotiator, James Lankford, the border metric threshold. That enforcement mechanism wasn't even on the table. For those unaware, Ron Johnson is speaking of a plan that had uh, tied border uh, improvements to foreign funding. But then Mitch McConnell stripped it all away and went for just giving money to Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. So instead of fixing the border, the bill only seeks to benefit Ukraine, Israel, and Taiwan. So now Biden, Mitch McConnell, and Alejandro Mayorkas are the main reason the United States of America is being overrun. Former President Donald Trump has just sparked massive controversy after he threatened to not protect members of NATO if they paid less than 2% of their economic output into the pool. During a campaign rally, Donald Trump stated, I would not protect you, NATO allies who don't pay. In fact, I would encourage their enemies to do whatever the hell they want. You gotta pay. You got to pay your bills. 
Now, do you agree with this reasoning or is Trump being unreasonable? Whether you agree or not, the head of NATO and President Biden did not react well to Trump's comments. In fact, NATO Secretary General Jen Stoltenberg stated, any suggestion that, suggestion that allies will not defend each other undermines all of our security, include, including that of the United States, and puts American and European soldiers at risk. And when it came to Biden, he labeled Trump as an unloyal transactional person and stated, Trump gave an invitation to Putin to invade some of our NATO allies. For God's sakes, it's dumb, it's shameful, it's un-American. However, what Trump is really saying is for far too long, most NATO nations have taken advantage of American taxpayer money to keep NATO funded. Trump got sick of giving away taxpayer money, and so he held NATO nations accountable. What they really hate about Trump is that he wanted accountability in order to be in the NATO club. Now, with these comments coming from Trump, you'd think Putin would support him over Biden, but that's not the case, at least not publicly. During an interview on Russian TV, Vladimir Putin claimed that he prefers Joe Biden more than Donald Trump because he's more experienced and predictable. Furthermore, he even testified that Biden's mental decline isn't as bad as people think, and that he spoke with him three years ago and he seemed sharp. Uh, Putin, that was three years ago. Now, in response to Putin endorsing Joe Biden for president, White House spokesman Andrew Bates stated, Mr. Putin should stay out of American elections. Now, I find it funny that... Uh, Biden doesn't want to be endorsed by Putin uh, and, and uh, says that uh, this is just a way to get Donald Trump elected. However, Donald Trump took this as a compliment. He said, of course they want Biden. Under Biden, Russia can do whatever they want and attack whoever they want. They've decimated Ukraine. Now, we all know that this would not have happened under Donald Trump. I can honestly say that avoiding debt is one of the smartest moves you can make with your money. Debt follows you around like a weight and accrues negative interest against you every day. I see people making 5% on their money while paying 29% on their debt. It doesn't make any sense. Many years ago, my wife and I set a goal to get out of debt. I carried an index card with me every day to remind me of my goal. Since then, I've become debt-free but wished I had known what I know now. PDS debt can get you a customized Get out of debt plan. They help you know whether to consolidate, negotiate, or accelerate your get out of debt plan, which is why I recommend PDS debt to my YouTube subscribers. I want you to save money, time, and frustration when it comes to getting out of debt. PDS debt is offering a free debt analysis. It only takes 30 seconds, so head over to pdsdebt.com forward slash Stephen to get your free assessment today. I'm going to leave a link down below to make it easy, but I want you to avoid interest and the headache and the fees that come with carrying debt. Thanks, PDS Debt, for sponsoring this video. After fears regarding Joe Biden's mental health grow, Vice President Kamala Harris has reiterated that she is ready to serve as President of the United States. Woo. Now, during an interview with the Wall Street Journal, Kamala Harris detailed that it is important for the American people to know that she is ready to serve regardless of the situation. But the problem remains, most Americans don't want her to be president. In fact, they have low confidence that she can even do vice president, let alone president. Now, to be fair, with constant wars going on, the American people have the right to high standards. It was just reported that Russia may be developing nuclear weapons that could be launched from space. The news first broke after House Intelligence Committee Chair Mike Turner released a cryptic warning to the American people by stating, Today, the House Permanent Select Committee of Intelligence has made available to all members of Congress information concerning a serious national security threat. I am requesting that President Biden declassify all information relating to this threat so that Congress, the administration, and our allies can openly discuss the actions necessary 
to respond to the threat. Only there's not a threat. This is all just smoke and mirrors. Now, before you get too scared that Russia is coming and they're going to blast us from space with nuclear bombs, House Representative Matt Gates said this is a shameful trick by Republican Representative Mike Turner in order to get more money for Ukraine and his corporate donors. Now, it makes me angry when people in Congress lie in order to manipulate you and me so that they can pry open American taxpayers' wallet and steal more money to give to their donors and foreign nations. And that's exactly what Mike Turner was trying to do. But as expected, even the Russian Kremlin said, this is a made-up story, this is a lie, in order to get U.S. Congress to give more money to Ukraine. While it's important to note that people are speculating that the threat in question could be a nuclear-capable satellite, we simply don't know anything about it, and we likely never will. Now, in a recent interview with Tucker Carlson, Russian President Vladimir Putin didn't seem too concerned about the United States of America. And to be honest, I'm not sure he should be. If we look at Ukraine, they are struggling severely to find men, soldiers, weapons, ammunition. However, in Russia, they have been expanding production of weaponry and machinery while increasing the number of service workers. Any attempt to prolong a stalemate will ultimately ruin many people's lives. Biden needs to focus more on peace and less on funding a stalemate war. Now, here's what should really make you mad about Russia. Russia now spends 7.5% of their national GDP on their military supply chain. They are paying people double overtime to work 12-hour shifts making ammunition and military equipment. Putin has created 520,000 high-paying jobs that are lifting Russian citizens out of poverty without having to borrow a single penny from China. He's investing into his own people and his own country. 3.5 million Russians are now creating war machines and ammunition to feed the Russian Federation Army of 1 million soldiers. Russia isn't giving money away to other countries, and they aren't giving money away to illegal immigrants. Their people are working, making good money, and, and living an affordable lifestyle. On top of that, Russia's military continues to grow as they increased wages for soldiers, and they are pumping money into the middle and lower income families in Russia, versus the trickle-down economic bullcrap in America, where billionaires get lots of money and then hoard it, and almost none of it trickles down to the rest of us. Russia has Tesla-sized plants pumping out tanks, armored vehicles, and missiles every day. Lastly, Russia is producing seven times the amount of ammunition, according to information coming out of Estonia. That means that every Western nation, when you combine their ammunition production, including the United States, Russia is producing seven bullets for every one created in the West. Now, this is not to prop up or brag about Russia. I don't really care about Russia. What I care about is look at what they're doing compared to us. They are turning their economy into a hot economy that's benefiting all of their citizens and they're preparing for attack. They're actually prepared to defend their own nation. All right, now some juicy bombshell information coming out of Georgia. Fulton County District Attorney Fonnie Willis and Prosecutor Nathan Wade have found themselves on the other side of the courtroom as they were the ones being questioned today. During the hearing, Wade admitted that he charged his corporate credit card to pay for vacations that he and Fonnie Willis went on as lovers and admitted that Fonnie Willis even paid him back in cash under the table. Now, this was just the start of the hearing, and I expect even more juicy information to come out. Now, on the stand, Fannie Willis didn't want to refer to Nathan Wade as her lover, just as a friend. She did, however, acknowledge that they had a long-standing sexual affair that broke up a marriage. She lied over and over again about paying Mr. Wade in cash. I mean, why does she have so much cash laying around, and why would you pay another lawyer cash under the table? It doesn't really make sense. Her best answer was, 
Black people like having cash. They don't like checks. Now, as you can see, I'm not a black person, so I can't verify any of that. Now, there is an AI-generated mugshot of Fonnie Willis that is trending on X, and uh, it's absolutely going viral as she's been caught in lie after lie after lie. Now, I'm not the one calling her a, a liar. The legal analyst over on MSNBC today said, DA Fonnie Willis has been caught in so many lies in just one day, there is no way she will continue to lead this case against Donald Trump. And in fact, the whole thing could be thrown out, which was music to Donald Trump's ears as he said, I am not going to jail for this lady. Now, you know who she's blaming for all of her lies and trouble and affair and everything? You're never going to guess it. <laughs> she's blaming Donald Trump. Trump's not even the one that figured out that she was having this affair. It was one of the other 18 people that she indicted who hired private investigators to dig into her life. And boy, are they finding a treasure trove of juicy information. Oh, I love giving you guys the news. Hey, this is my update for today. Before you go, I want to remind you that you are amazing. Do not leave YouTube without watching the video of me with Colonel Douglas McGregor. It's really good. Please give this video a like. Hit that subscribe button. Check out PDS Debt if you want to get out of debt fast. I'll leave that video right here. Hey, thanks so much, and I will see you on the next video.